facing a problem uh, with a network. So I have to, you know, organize the session with my mobile phone. <laughs> so it will have some kind of problem. Okay. So how are you, sir? It's nice fine. to meet you. Yeah, it's very nice to meet you. Thank you for your invitation. Yes. I'm glad. Yes, yes, yes. You are in Rajasthan I... now, right? Yes, 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 yes. It's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Such okay. a far distance, but... Yes, yes. Because of this uh, advancement of internet. Yeah, and we are in one... We live really... One a, virtual room. globalized world in its real sense. <laughs> amazing. It's shrinking, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so we can wait for uh, some uh, two or three minutes oh. and we'll organize the session. And sure. uh, happy birthday to our man Colin back also. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <That's> so true. <laughs> what a coincidence. Yes, it's a really coincidence. Yeah. And uh, I can, I can uh, you know, relate uh, with the, uh, you know, today is a very special day also in different sense. You know, uh, today is a uh, uh, United Nation of Zero Discrimination Day. That's and, true. Uh, <laughs> yes. That's and so I was true. yesterday. I uh, read some of the very important uh, uh, writings on um, uh, Colin Back and I, Ramchandra Guha. You know, mm -hmm. these are very important thinkers who really, so you know, yes. contextualize Gandhi in today's you know context also. So I think, uh, shall we start the session? From my point of view, yes, we are. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Yes, small circle yeah. of interested uh, yes. participants. Yes, and, yes, um, yes, yes. I, I, was, I was quite happy about your invitation. Thank you, thank you so much. Of several reasons. One is mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. each dialogue between the continents Mm -hmm. might be a kind of contribution to a new mm -hmm. understanding mm -hmm. and also the basis to find new ideas and to share experience. Mm -hmm. This is one. Mm -hmm. The second is mm -hmm. I have a high regard for the advanced social sciences in mm -hmm. India and also uh, the culture of social scientist publications. And mm -hmm. I think it's also following the influence of a critical peace theory, mm -hmm. critical theory referring mm -hmm. to uh, those who try to got, get mm -hmm. a deeper understanding of violence. Mm -hmm. and my particular interest has always been to link the analysis of violence with the analysis of scapegoat mechanisms and also mm -hmm. uh, the analysis of sacrificial violence, ex um, you know, the ritual and uh, mythological mm -hmm. patterns which mm -hmm. always uh, regenerate violence mm -hmm. and sacrificing living beings. Mm -hmm. And um, as a ardent vegetarian or pacifist and vegetarian, mm -hmm. I really felt home when I visited the home of the descendants of Hermann Kallenbach in Haifa, in Israel. So, uh, uh, I think, I think, uh, uh, sir, I it would be very interesting if I give your interesting, uh, you know, introduction, and then I will. Give yeah. a brief context, and after that, you will uh, proceed yeah. your lecture, right? So, uh, for the sake of uh, you know, uh, recording, so uh, first of all, happy birthday to Harvan Fallenbach. And uh, today is a very special day. Today is a uh, you know, a United Nation of Zero Discrimination Day, and uh, you know, the day uh, aims to promote uh, equality before the law and uh, in practice throughout the, all the member of countries of UN. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, all of you. I, Randhir Kumar Gautam, on behalf of Rage Foundation and the School of Humanities and Social Sciences of Raffles University, a warm welcome to Christian Balf and uh, 
uh, you, the students, colleagues, academics, welcoming to this very inter interesting international webinar. It is a pleasant movement and it is a serendipity to brought Christian Balkov to deliver on lecture on the very topic, Gandhi, uh, Gandhi, Colin Beck, and civil disobedience. Uh, let me first uh, give a, a brief introduction of our uh, speaker. Christian Bartolf is an eminent educational and political scientist, closely collaborating with the Free University Berlin, and since November 1993, uh, president of uh, Gandhi Information Center, a research and education work for nonviolence, the Society of uh, Education of Benefit to Public Waste in Berlin, Germany, and curator of more than 20 exhibitions on nonviolent resistance for Berlin Anti-War Museum on Gandhi, Tolstoy, Thoreau, Ruskin, and Huxley. He had extensively researched uh, Mahatma Gandhi's correspondences with uh, uh, contemporaries and published several important books, uh, biographies, uh, monographs, articles on Tolstoy, Gandhi, uh, non-violent resistant. Currently, he is he's the president of Gandhi Information Center in Berlin, and he's uh, deeply you know, uh, interested uh, uh, in Gandhi's life, work, uh, and also uh, one of uh, the Harman Kollenbach biographers. Uh, so he's uh, one of the best uh, intellectuals, I would say, uh, who has authority on this uh, topic. And before the uh, talk of Christian Bartol, let me uh, try to give a brief context of his type, uh, talk. Uh, 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 we know uh, Gandhi, uh, one of the famous public figure in the world. And if I can recall, uh, uh, his personality, then I can recall one of my favorite sociologists, Amin Srinivas, who once said, Gandhi was at heart a philosophical anarchist, deriving inspiration from his ideas from Tolstoy, Ruskin, and Thuru. These are the three important, three day, Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahesh of, you know, Gandhian's uh, psychological personal development. So in that sense, love, peace, and justice are the hallmark of Gandhian thought. Civil disobedience, written by Henry David Thoreau, is widely considered you know, to be one of the top essays of all time. He published Civil Disobedience in 1843, before the birth of Gandhi. But Gandhi has very significant impact of uh, this particular contribution of Thoreau. Uh, you know, thorough defending the morality of consistious, uh, you know, objection to unjust law, the concept of civil disobedience, he argues, remains a uh, pivotal, uh, you know, tool for anyone hoping to bring about political and social change. Gandhi's experiment in civil disobedience to access their relevance for struggles today, we are witnessing the farmer protest, one of the largest protests anywhere in the world. And we can uh, sense the significance of Gandhian method. Gandhi is a major part of our collective conscience. Each notion, the ideas of dissent has always been to people's movement. Gandhi's strategy of mobilization as a collective subconscious method of nonviolence, satyagraha, you know, toward the uh, very uh, significant ideas uh, which need to be discussed. In this context, I uh, uh, can recall uh, one Gandhian uh, insights. Loyalty to a corrupt state is a sin. Disloyalty is a virtue. In Gandhi's civil disobedience is a manifestation of this very idea. Gandhi's epistemology of social development is unique because it gives primacy of coexistence, solidarity or friendship and rejects the thesis of class of civilization. He often states truth lies hidden in untruth, 
even God lies hidden in things. If I think Gandhi is a matter of love, Gandhi is a matter of truth and justice. I wish when Professor Christian is going to talk about the relationship between Colin Beck and Gandhi, kindly, sir, let us about the social biographical context of that time. You know, how Gandhi's method could have been applied by German Jews. We know the fact Hitler ideologies, you know, is a result of dualism between the self and the other. You know, that Hitler represented, especially in his approach of his enemies and the Jews. Even today's time, we can sir, see other otherization in the context of political passivity. Although Mahatma Gandhi and Colin Beck helped uh, 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 to bring the idea to prominence, even today, it remains unclear how we should uh, best understood civil uh, disobedience. As I have already said, sir, I have a lot of curiosity about Gandhi's time in Africa. And it is said that, uh, you know, earliest part of his stay in Africa, he has a racist, you know, attitude towards the people in Africa. So, you know, a lot of misunderstanding uh, of, you know, uh, distortion of historical fact are coming. So in that sense, I would like to, uh, uh, you to give also uh, some of the uh, important scientific historical fact uh, so that we can have a good sense of that juncture of history. So over to you, sir. Thank you. That is a Thank good so introduction, a very proper introduction. And I, I'm particularly glad that you referred to Henry David Thoreau and his concept yes. of civil disobedience. Mm -hmm. Because um, to bring it in a nutshell, it's quite clear that Henry David Thoreau acted against the expansion of the slavery system to mm -hmm. um, those territories who were conquered mm -hmm. by the United States in their war against Mexico. In, mm -hmm. And this by a year long poll tax resistance. And mm -hmm. um, this war tax resistance was the reason why he was imprisoned for one night in his cell. Mm -hmm. And Henry David Thoreau, then after release, against his will, by the way, because a relative of his paid a fine for him mm -hmm. against his will. Uh, after his release, he gave a lecture about this, why he was resisting uh, to pay the poll taxes and why he was preferring, why he preferred to go to jail because of his protest against the US Amer um, American Mexican war and the expansion of slavery and against slavery. He was an ob abolitionist at that time, influenced by great women around him who uh, held meetings in the local hall and he was the key holder of this local hall. So he was influenced and later on, um, it was so that after his experiments with two years living in the forest, just to contemplate upon the the reason why human beings live and the uh, relation to nature. He used that very same hut to shelter a refugee, a fugitive slave. And he held meetings for the abolitionist groups there in Concord, Massachusetts, a very uh, significant historical place. And nowadays still there is a great tradition um, organized by the Thoreau Society, ecological education, political education, and this non-conformist Henry David Thoreau was in a circle of transcendentalists, um, hugely inspired by Indian philosophy. Uh, Thoreau himself built the shelves for the books he received, Indian philosophy books. So, um, Henry David Thoreau's diaries are his main work, but his essays became most famous. And um, he was really one of those um, who brought about the end of slavery, official end of legal slavery in the US and supported the efforts of those who were um, supporting ref refugee slaves from this 
southern states like John Brown, he was holding high esteem of such courageous acts. So in a way, you can say that when um, Gandhi and Kallenbach collaborated together with friends to end the indentured labor system somehow or to, to, um, to levy the text, uh, the text which was imposed on uh, the Indian citizens, immigrant labors. And um, it was not just a campaign for free trade in Transvaal or not all, it was also, you know, a protest against the injustice, the suppression of a, of a system which was a follow-up system, a kind of semi-slavery system. Uh, this was the word of Gandhi, by the way, semi-slavery. Um, the indentured labor system with uh, protectors. And it was in a context of, let me say, liberal thoughts in an intercultural atmosphere when he built up his international printing press in Phoenix settlement near Durban. And then he was um, certainly influenced by those who are com combined vocational training with thoughts of emancipation like John Dugo, who was himself studying at Oberlin and influenced by Booker T. Washington. And he himself was a printer and so Gandhi learned somehow it was a mutual cultural um, influence for two separate uh, liberation movements. One was the Satyagraha, the Satyagraha campaigns uh, from uh, the Indian community in South Africa. And one war the predecessors of the Amer African National Congress uh, organized by John Langali Balele Dube and his wife Nokutela. They were <clears throat> organizing the Olange Institute, which was only a few miles away from Phoenix settlement was the same area at <clears throat> Inanda, now KwaZulu Natal in South Africa. It was like a, you can com compare it somehow like uh, with, the, with the Old Testament exodus of the people of Israel uh, from, uh, from the Egyptian uh, um, slavery. Uh, through the Red Sea to the uh, desert of Sinai. And you know, on Mount Sinai, there was uh, the new ethical code um, for mankind, uh, the Ten Commandments. And Moses was the, the uh, Moses was the, uh, the prophet. And uh, it is not by a coincidence that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who, as we know, was primarily influenced by Henry David Thoreau's civil disobedience, and then by Mahatma Gandhi's Satyagraha, that his last speech for, for those, uh, you know, simple workers in Memphis was uh, a clear, plain identification with this prophet of Moses and the exodus from slavery. Exodus means a collective uh, walk, uh, transcending borders, um, an act of civil disobedience. On the one hand, a uh, an escape, a refuge, but also a liberation, an act of liberation active, actively, a very strong act until this very day, reminded by the Jewish people in their, <clears throat> in their basic Pesach rites at Seder evening. And you know, I want to tell you that it is a mm, a reflection necessary not only on socio-economic circumstances of uh, colonialist and imperialist um, suppression 
in the time when South Africa uh, was a colony of Europeans uh, before independence. But also, one should always think about the, the aspect of cultural violence, which means uh, the um, different approaches to claim history for yourself. And what Gandhi uh, was organizing was appealing to many Christians, but also to members of Jewish, the Jewish community in, in South Africa, because they felt as outsiders in Europe, in Europe because of the pogroms of the Russian Tsarist regime, and also because of waves of anti-Semitism, um, which were deeply rooted in the, the bias and prejudice patterns of early Christian anti-Judaism, in the, in the bias and prejudice patterns in the narratives of the gospel writers, for example. And um, Hermann Kallenbach came from a border sit situation. He came from a, from a small village in nowadays Lithuania. And this village was, um, was full of forests and uh, creeks. And he was a very you know, um, athletic man. He, he was a vital, energetic boy in his childhood with brothers and sisters. And he, his official birthplace was Ruz, but the family story goes like this, that he had been born in a, in a Russian city nearby, but to be naturalized as German citizen, he gave this as the official birth place, whatever the truth might be, we do not know. But uh, there is now a monument, the only peace monument maybe in Lithuania, I don't know, at least one of the first peace monuments in Lithuania, with Gandhi and Kallenbach at this particular place in Rusia. Yeah? And Kallenbach himself and Gandhi met maybe through the Theosophical Society, but introduced by Mr. Khan, and they were somehow um, feeling a great mutual sympathy for each other. Gandhi certainly was uh, bright enough to gain the support of Europeans in his emancipation struggle for rights, for the Indian community, actually for together with other um, leaders of the community, uh, also with Chinese and Tamil, with for all Asi Asian uh, immigrants, and also um, um, certainly you can say it was a directed against the anti-Asiatic laws who were discriminatory, who were all, also an act of racism, not just, you know, of uh, socioeconomic discrimination. That's the reason why uh, this um, awareness of being a, a conscious outsider, you can say, a conscious um, untouchable somehow for those who, who felt superior because of their claim on history and culture and religion white Europeans with a specific interpretation of uh, the Christian tradition mostly. That is why they started to befriend each other and collaborate with each other. And what were the first topics they were talking about? That was quite significant. It was Buddha. Why? Because uh, Kallenbach was a successful architect in South Africa. 
he he was learning carpentry in Germany. He was um, following the advice of a relative. It was like the um, the promised land, uh, South Africa, to make a successful, to create a successful business in his field, to collaborate with other architects, build communal buildings. Uh, influenced by the Bauhaus style, uh, also with correspondences to Gropius and Mendelssohn. Um, he was building uh, secular buildings, but also religious buildings, synagogues, churches. And this um, successful businessman who had an enormous technological knowledge about all aspects of uh, high building architecture, he he was uh, spending, not wasting, but spending so much energy on building up the Tolstoy farm together with Gandhi, because both of them were not just um, struggling about simplicity and luxury. And Gandhi was a teacher for Kalmbach to, to teach him uh, giving up luxury and addictions. Uh, like uh, alcohol or such. And um, it was also that um, you can say they were both impressed by Tolstoy's, Count Leo Tolstoy's active support, 20 year long active support for conscientious objectors to military service, individual, but also collective resistors like the spirit wrestlers, the Tukubors. And these um, were even nominated for the first Nobel Peace Prize by Tolstoy, who himself was nominated somehow, but he, res he resisted, said, the, those who served the cause of peace best were the spirit wrestlers, the, the Dukobors who burned their we weapons collectively in, in the southern part of Russia, not, but in the Georgia, Azerbaijan, northeast Turkey nowadays. Thousands of people under the influence of the very same book which impressed Gandhi most, the Tolstoy's book, The Kingdom of God is Within You, which is <clears throat> actually a pamphlet against uh, against legal military conscription. <clears throat> so although Kallenbach had been a, a soldier for one year, uh, and he was a very, you could say, muscular, uh, energetic man who, who was impressed by bodybuilders like Sando. Um, Kallenbach had a, had a very, very strong uh, feeling, sentiment for justice, you know, for justice and for, for peace also, both as if they kissed each other, you know, justice and peace, kissing each other. This is the term of the Old Testament. You can't, you can't have a peace without justice and the other way around. So this is one thing. One, the other thing is that he was deeply impressed by the light of Asia. This is the title of the book of Sir Edwin Arnold, which was read by Gandhi, the first book on Buddha. So it was the compassion of Buddha. It was the, the Karuna, maybe. It was the, uh, the moral duty to serve others if they are in distress. What we call solidarity nowadays, after decades of strong 
organized worker movements, movements of gardeners and peasants and industrial workers. You can say it's the idea of solidarity. But uh, linked with compassion and also respect for life, you know, respect for life and physical inviolability. So now I give you um, an example. It is a key moment of the epic march, the border crossing march between Transvaal and Natal and Kallenbach <clears throat> was the one who stood up in a very hot meeting, emotionally hot. That means passionate meeting of white settlers, colonialists who wanted to massacre these Indians these thousands of Indians, combination of mine workers and the families of the political prisoners. And among them, Kastoba Gandhi, but also many Tamil supporters, Mr. Lazarus, Tambi Naidu, all, they, all of them would have been massacred <clears throat> but there were <clears throat> three Jewish collaborators of Gandhi who tried to prevent this from taking place. Uh, Sonja Schlesin from the same area, e former East Prussia, that means now Lithuania, Poland, uh, Soviet exclave at the Baltic Sea from the Rosenberg family. Sonja Schlesin, a very witty, humorous, cheerful, energetic secretary, later teacher, and also <clears throat> the great Henry Solomon Leon Pollack from England, who were supporting Gandhi, and Hermann Kallenbach, the German Jewish architect. So now uh, I, I read a small passage, how Hermann Kallenbach prevented this massacre from taking place. And it's, <clears throat> it gives you also the reason why I wrote this biography. <clears throat> I show you the biography first. You can find this <clears throat> on the internet. I can give you the link in the chat. <clears throat> and here you see the, <clears throat> the tall story and Hermann Kallenbach on his walk from the Tolstoy farm to Johannesburg. And this is a print from Indian opinion. And um, Mr. Kallenbach attended this meeting to reason with the Europeans who were, however, not prepared to listen to him. Indeed, some of them even stood up to assault him. Mr. Kallenbach is an athlete, having received physical training at the hands of Sando, the bodybuilder, you know, and it was not easy to frighten him. One European challenged him to a duel. Mr. Kallenbach replied, as I have accepted the religion of peace, I may not accept the challenge. Let him who will come and do his worst with me, but I will continue to claim a hearing at this meeting. You have publicly invited all Europeans to attend and I'm here to inform you that not all Europeans are ready as you are to lay violent hands upon innocent men. There is one European who would like to inform you that the charges you level at the Indians are farce. 
The Indians do not want what you imagine them to do. The Indians are not out to challenge your position as rulers. They do not wish to fight with you or to fill the country. They only seek justice, pure and simple. They propose to enter the Transvaal not with a view to settling there, but only as an effective demonstration against the unjust tax which is levied on them. They are brave men. They will not injure you in person or in property. They will not fight with you, but enter the Transvaal they will, even in the face of your gunfire. They are not the men to beat a retreat from fear of your bullets or your spears. They propose to melt, and I know they will melt your hearts by self-suffering. This is all I have to say. I have had my say, and I believe that I have thus rendered you a service. Beware and save yourselves from perpetrating a wrong. With these words, Mr. Kallenbach resumed his seat. The audience was rather abashed. The pugilist who had invited Mr. Kallenbach to single combat became his friend. So you see, this, this is a most remarkable. First, it shows you nonviolent intervention, the alternative to a dual, uh, what is it called? A single combat. <laughs> so no fist fight, no bloodshedding. And, and a fearless speech, uh, convinced that he's in the right, justice, pure and simple. And then in addition, the preparedness to communicate, although he was intimidated, you know. And then not to use his physical power, his physical athletic, you know, mm, brute force power, you know, um, but his spiritual power, force, soul force, amazing. And now let me say what would have happened if Kallenbach would have failed? Can you imagine? Amazing, no? It would have been another great violent event because during this time there were crimes, massacres, not only wars like the two Boer Wars, but also massacres, you know, uh, even genocidal massacres genocides, not only in South or Southwest Africa by the German and the English colonial power with the Bambata rebellion or a Bambata revolt called Zulu rebellion, but this is a euphemism. Um, but also in or, or, or by the Germans in uh, Southwest, nowadays Namibia against the Herero and Nama, the genocide. But also in East Africa, the Maji Maji, and also the, uh, the atrocities of the French colonial power in, in Northwest Africa and also in West Africa, 
Central Africa. So you had a, an age of, yes, you can say genocide. In this situation could have taken place the same in South Africa. Even worse than the Bambata um, rebellion. Even worse than the two Boer Wars with uh, forms of concentration camps, which you cannot compare with the German concentration camps, certainly, but which were so horrible for the Boer prisoners that Gandhi worked and acted as a social servant to improve the hygienic sanitary conditions to, um, you know, to prevent diseases spreading. So Gandhi was uh, completely aware that the foundation of nonviolent resistance firm nonviolent resistance is to be able to exercise different vocations. He learned this from John Ruskin and he learned the fearlessness from Socrates who drank this cup of poison as a witness of truth in spite of false allegations against him. And he learned the non-conformist conscientious objection from Henry David Thoreau. And it was not a coincidence that he covered the wisdom of Thoreau, Socrates and Ruskin in sequels in his Indian opinion. Also, by the way, another sequel on ethical religion because Gandhi himself didn't want to change his faith, but he was deeply attracted by, by the um, by the enlightened souls of other religions and faiths, you know, in, in different religions and faiths. So he was uh, he was learning from the Sermon on the Mount, for example. This is a poetical philosophical wisdom book in the New Testament, which is encouraging you. It's, it's kind of a message of empowerment for us to be the salt of the earth, you know, and show our light, spiritual light, not hide it. It's like a, um, like a modern psalm of those who are persecuted to try to keep up not only their human dignity, but also the hope, hope as the food for the soul, you know. So, of course, I, I'm not here to preach, but I just want to give you a one reference why Hermann Kallenbach's birthday today is significant for all of us. And uh, one reason is that he prevented a massacre from taking place. The other reason is that together with Gandhi and the families of the Satyagrahis, he built up the Tolstoy farm, a settlement project second of five. And he was uh, showing that communal cooperative work, uh, simple life, vocational training is best education for, for young people, children, adolescents, but also for adults. And it was also inter-religious, inter-cultural, inter-communal uh, project in the name of Tolstoy, who gave his authorization, who was so happy to see that there is an, an heir 
an Indian follower of his principle of non-cooperation, non-violent non-cooperation, who, who, who he could pass on his heritage in his last letter. In his last letter where he expressed his hope that Gandhi would continue his legacy. And this letter arrived at Gandhi's place, Gandhi's and Kallenbach's place. Both of them had a correspondence with Tolstoy when Tolstoy had already died in 1910. So it was a testament. And we should see that Tolstoy's testament was not written to anyone who we do not know, but to Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi and Hermann Kallenbach. And this was a, this was so obvious that when I uh, learned about this, I thought, if you want to write history in you, you know, if you want to start an alternative history writing from the point of view of nonviolent social movements for em emancipation, for social justice, economic justice, and um, ecology and peace, then you you can't ignore you can't ignore upper house and lower house as they called each other. Yeah, Gandhi and Kallenbach. This is a local history museum Durban publication, 1994, forward by Ila Gandhi, edited by Gillian Burning. It contains letters and photos to show you. Yeah. It's um, followed by Gandhi sites in Bur Durban. I'll show you also the other publications to be fair to authors who were, who who did research and are still researching. Uh, uh, one was uh, George Paxton about Sonja Schlesien. The, the only publication about her. George Paxton is the editor of the Gandhi Way of the Gandhi Foundation. He's living in Glasgow, so a very dedicated man. But also, from Israel, the first study was um, Gideon Shimoni's um, book for the Leonard Davis Institute of the Hebrew University. He also, uh, Professor Gideon Shimoni also wrote the encyclopedia article about Hermann Kallenbach in the Encyclopedia Judaica with reference to our um, first concise biography. And the second biography was written by Shimon Lev, an Israeli artist and scholar, scientist, who, were, who was not just interested in um, the story of Gandhi and Kallenbach with his book, Soulmates, but also who, uh, who was researching on the uh, Indian-Israeli uh, relations somehow, the forerunners like uh, Shulamit Flaum, who was uh, linked with Rabindranath Tagore. He wanted to know more about her. She was a Jewish traveler, I can say. And um, there was a sympathetic relationship to Tagore, so he was um, also some link to Lithuania. So he did some research on this recently. And I'm, I'm happy, you know, this was the reason why Dr. Isa Sarik, the grandniece of Hermann Kallenbach, who lived in Haifa and myself met each other from 1987 to 2007, actually. And in 1997, we could publish our biography. But what is the contribution of Gandhi and Kallenbach to the tradition of civil disobedience? I think it is the following, that you can act 
in a cultural calculate way to you can breach the law and also um, um, accept the, the fines after a court trial and uh, stand up for your principles against the codified law maybe. Sometimes you breach a particular law. Sometimes it's a, it's a symbol for the completely uh, authoritarian dictatorship uh, system, which is rotten. But um, this act of civil disobedience against a certain law as a expression of nonviolent resistance and non-cooperation with a system which you find evil, which is against your conscientious um, principles principles of conscience. Um, this act of illegal nonviolent resistance, civil resistance, is always linked, this is we can learn, it's always linked with um, injustice in economic and social relations. And only when um, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., for example, and his civil rights movements combined these um, collective civil disobedience actions in Birmingham, Alabama, with the economic boycott of those white racists who were uh, ignoring the emancipation proclamation even 100 years afterwards only then he became successful with the solidarity of clergymen who he appealed to in his letter from the birmingham jail but not to forget those uh, jewish justice seekers who were also speaking at the march on washington they have been ignored until now. And they were from German descendants. You know. Now, just the last word. Uh, what is the link between Germany and um, the Jewish faith and religion and sense of justice and peace, shalom? With, um, with the tradition of nonviolent resistance. And it was Gandhi who summarized this. In one of his letters, in one of his letters to Hermann Kallenbach as a prisoner of war, German citizen, prisoner of war at, on the Isle of Man during the First World War, he was um, encouraging the prisoner, Hermann Kallenbach, who could not join Gandhi in his uh, so, so impressive and um, guiding regional campaigns in uh, India, Kedar, Ahmedabad, Champaran. So he missed him. He missed Kalmbach on his side. And um, and Gandhi wrote to Kallenbach um, some words which were somehow um, you know somehow a summary of Gandhi's perception on this unique friend. And we, we both know that he had a, a reunion with him during the 30s. And it was a very cheerful reunion. There is a photo of both of them. They were so happy to meet each other after so many decades. But in this moment where 
despair was a real danger. You know, as a prisoner of war at the aliens detention camp on the Isle of Man, Nokolo. Hmm. Hermann Kallenbach, he um, was addressed a letter to by Gandhi, which read as follows. Gandhi to Kallenbach. Mm -hmm. Your life there must mm. be a model for the others. How I would love to think that you are there vindicating your German birth, ancestral faith, and our joint ideals. You vindicate the first two if you realize the third. Mm. And I know, and I know you will not fail. That's thank you. It's amazing. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Actually, we are running out of the time. Um, <coughs> otherwise, we'll uh, have a lot of you know discussion uh, in this regard. Uh, but thank you so much, sir. Uh, such a memorable lecture. And it was a pleasure to listen to you. And uh, we do have a violence culture, you know. But Gandhi's main aim, uh, you know, in life was to give people, uh, as you have uh, un underlined, alternative way. You know, Gandhi calls for new initiative in thinking itself, actions and transformation broader border across you know crossing dialogues you have also mentioned this through process of emancipated consensus building and then only we have uh, you know transformation in society so i wish you all the best and let us you know each one us try our best to deepening the value of gandhian thought and respect and friendship in our life as Columbeck and Gandhi did in their life. Thank you so much, sir.